guys, it's J-Rob or TRC, where once again we're here in J-Rob's garage, kind of my 90s man cave. I've got my 1994 Mazda RX-7 behind me, and before any of you guys start wondering, yes, it's still rotary powered. It's got a 13B REW in it. It's um, kind of a hodgepodge of stuff. It's kind of built here and tuned here, but there's a local guy named Lewis Shear who built my motor. Um, kind of an old school rotary guy, he's originally from Kentucky. He moved out here, I don't know, five or six years ago. Kind of hooked up with him and he kind of is my go-to rotary engine guy. So obviously my 94 Montego Blue RX-7, um, it's only got 80,000 miles on it. It's got a set of pretty rare Volk SE37s. I love these wheels. A lot of people don't like them. I really like them. I think they fit the color well. Um, we're still adjusting the suspension. We'll probably adjust it down a little bit. The paint on this car is not in great shape. That's the next step for this car. Pull the engine back out put a new transmission in it, get the car painted, get the engine bay painted, get it cleared up and cleared and tucked. Just make it nice, because the car is a nice shell, it's just the paint's original and it's not in the greatest shape. Um, but kind of the high points, I mean, there's nothing really too special about the car. I mean, it's like I said, it's got the old gray exhaust on it, as you can see. Bro, melted the weird light that we are racing that Viper, that's all new. something to match your Supra. Yeah, so I don't know. I'll probably leave that. It kind of gives it character. I did not know I did that the other night. But yeah, RX-7s, you will melt your bumper. You gotta be careful. But yeah, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's got a Grady three inch intercooler kit from back in the day. It's got a fluid dyne radiator, built, ported, pinned motor. It's got the 13B RE intake manifold from Japan. It's got Dietchworks injectors. It's got a primary and a secondary fuel rail. The secondary fuel rail is on the lower side, um, so you can get quite a bit of fuel in there if you need it. Um, Ryan completely wired all this, put you know the nice connectors, rewired the whole engine bay for me. You know, it's other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, it's typical stuff. We'll probably take it to 27, 28 pounds before too long. Um, kind of push push our luck, play with fire. At that boost level, the car will probably make 700, 715 which I know at that level, they don't, they don't live the longest. I think rotaries, street rotaries, live pretty well at the 600 horsepower range if they're built properly and tuned properly. Like I said, this car has been together five to 10,000 miles, six to 10 months. I've driven it more than I've ever driven it before. And literally, we just got through driving it and I guarantee it'll hot start. That's the thing with rotaries, they don't hot start well. Because what happens is the, the housings get hot, everything gets hot and it expands, it loses compression. This will probably start within three or four cranks. spin down forever but that's the the joy and the, the thing that i love about this turbo in this car now is it's just so much smaller so it spools quicker so with the big turbo i mean it would just it wouldn't like to six seven grand or grand it made way more power but i mean you just you lived above seven grand now this car makes boost at 3500 and you can rev it to nine to ten the power band's much broader I mean, it's just, it's much, much more fun. As you see, it's still spinning. I mean, ball bearings and two precisions are where it's at. It's been a really, really solid setup. I hope you guys enjoy this feature. We're going to take it out some more, hopefully this year, and maybe take it to the track and see if we can't run some quarter mile times. I'm pretty confident the car will go low tens, high nines, and a, you know, non-cage street car. I mean, that's pretty fun power level. But yeah, I mean, cruising characteristics, the car's great. I mean, we're fourth gear. 55 RPM, 55 miles an hour at only 3,000 RPM. Not real loud, doesn't vibrate or beat you to death. It's got a nice exhaust to it, it's not real drony. Now when you go to go wide open throttle, it definitely gets a little bit louder. Holy <laughs> 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 Now they made 
big power late, obviously, because it takes a little bit longer to get on the turbo, and yeah, they don't make the torque that a piston motor does, but, you know, at 25, 26, 2700 pounds, 9,000, 10,000 RPM rev limit, you don't need it. You know, you, you kind of like put the car in the power bin, downshift, we're at 5200, we're all into it. As far as the fabricating, the ECU and all that stuff, um, all that's taken care of down in San Antonio by Ryan Rodriguez. Uh, Solo Tune is kind of his business. He specializes in rotary. He's got a really, really fast yellow Datsun that he drives down there. He's actually one of the original import street outlaw guys that kind of when I reached out to him, Morris Martinez in Kansas City and told him, hey, let's find some import guys. He was one of the guys that came up and raced Big Chief and Sean and all those guys on street outlaws back in 2014 and 15. That's where our relationship started. Originally had this car built from Bolo de Humo in Kansas City, or Morris Martinez, but as his family started expanding, as did his business, he didn't have time for a lot of outside cars. He only had time to specialize on his, which I get. So I reached out to Ryan and Ryan has taken me with open arms and kind of made this car what it is now. It's powered by an FT450 fuel tech ECU. Um, he did a completely new wiring harness on this car to wire that in. Uh, and it's powered by a Precision 6870. It's got the tile housing on it. Um, it's an 84 AR on it. Uh, Ryan also built a custom twin gate manifold for that turbo. It's got a Grady four row in intercooler on it. Um, it's got a custom three inch exhaust, nothing too crazy. It's powered by eight Dechworks 2200 CC injectors. It's got a MagnaFuel 750 inline pump that the sump, the gas tank is sumped, so it pulls from there. It's got a Exidy triple disc clutch. Uh, surprisingly or not, it's got a stock five speed gearbox. Yes, I've broke a bunch. I've also had a T56 in this car at one point, but I really prefer the factory gearing and I'm not trying to set the world on fire with this car. So if I got to put a gearbox every year or so, it's not that big of a deal. It's actually got a stalker end. It's got a cause two-way LSD though, and it's got 300 M axles. It's actually the exact same diff and axle setup that is actually Rob Dom's three rotor car. Me and Rob worked out a deal where I gave him my T56 and my built 88. He gave me some of his stock parts with the rear end and we just worked out a swap deal. Um, it's got a set of Volk SE37s on it. They're 18 inch, they're bronze in color. Uh, probably my favorite set of street wheels that I own. It's got a set of old school JIC Magic 2 coilovers on it. That I actually bought another RX-7 last year that were 2J swapping currently, that these were brand new in the box. This car had a set of old HKS uh, drag coilovers on it that were completely blown. So we swapped those out recently. It's got factory brakes components on it. And other than that, it's a pretty simple setup. Um, I enjoy this car. This pretty moderate boost level. Um, could we turn it up more? Absolutely. The motor is pin, but it doesn't have lightened or clearance rotors in it. Um, I didn't really want to go for the weight that it takes to get those back from the machine shop because I was pretty antsy to get the car back together, so we put it back together. If we were pushing seven, eight, nine hundred horsepower like we used to chase, I would need that stuff. Balancing Wiz actually did that in Puerto Rico on my old motor. My old motor had a GT47 framed 8284 with a T6 housing. Absolute massive turbo. you're just strictly drag racing the car. Driving it around on the street, it wasn't a lot of fun. It was extremely laggy, but man, on the 6870 Gen 2, it lights instantly, makes power from 3,000 to 9,000. 
It's just a great power band. It struggles with traction as it is. It's got a set of 285 Mission Pilot Sports on the back. Just an absolute joy to drive. I also had a set of Hoosiers for it. Um, we did Weld RTS's 15 inch rear, uh, 15 inch front. It's kind of a drag pack setup. Haven't got to take the chance to take this car to the track yet. I'm anticipating somewhere probably in the lot, low 10s, high 9s in the power level that it makes if we can get it to 60 foot. That's coming pretty soon. We just got the car back together a few months ago. So once the weather gets warmer here in Oklahoma, after TX2K sometime, we're gonna go to the strip, see if we can't bust out a nine in this car. Have a nine second daily driven, capable rotary car will be pretty cool. <laughs> out there that are curious about rotaries you hear that they get a bad persona for blowing apex seals or unreliable all of that has everything to do with who you have building them there's plenty of rotary shops out there that are competent builders that can make a rotary core reliable but there's also just as many if not more that can't so if you're choosing a rotary shop make sure you do plenty of homework pick the right one 
because there's just something about driving a rotary car that's special. I mean, the 9,000 RPM power band, the smells, you know, you get ethanol fuel mixed with a Castor 927 premix that we put in this car. It's just something about the driving experience. Is it the fastest? No. Does it break the best? No. But 2,600 pounds at 600 wheel horsepower is a hell of a lot of fun. You hop in this car, the gearbox shifts great. You shift first, you shift second, you hear the wastegate, the turbo sounds, you grab into third gear. As you're spinning the tires to 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, somewhere around there, the car will finally grab traction and it's a rocket ship. From 80 to 120, shifting into fourth gear, it's a phenomenal experience. And on diesel, it feels like a dragon is chasing you. When this thing blows fireballs out the back, it literally will wrap around the car sometimes, lights the whole ditch up, the car beside you. It's a majestic experience, it really is. So for those that are scared of a rotary, I get it, I was the same way, I'm a piston guy. But try it, if you have the ability to try a rotary car, it's worth it, you will not regret it. Owning a rotary is so special because it's the only car on the road like it. There's no other cars out there really besides maybe a Tesla or, or an EV car that doesn't have pistons. This car sounds different, it smells different, it looks different, everything about it is just different. So if you're like me and you like different stuff, I highly, highly recommend you try a rotary car. I don't think you're gonna regret it. So, a lot of RX-7s and rotaries are notorious for shooting fireballs. Why is that? Obviously, they work a little different than a normal engine. Uh, a lot different, I should say. So they have a lot of unburnt fuel because they have like a trailing and a leading timing. I honestly don't really understand that. Um, I just, I drive them, <laughs> I don't tune them, but I know they have a leading and a trailing timing. And there's a lot of unburnt fuel in there. I think that's one of the reasons why in 95, Mazda ceased production of this car. They couldn't pass OBD2 emissions. There's just no way to help with the raw fuel. They couldn't pass them. So there's a lot of unburnt raw fuel that ends up in the exhaust. And then as EGTs get higher, it lights. And then you get the fireball effect. You know, these cars from the factory, they even have a little switch on it that says exhaust overheat. So it has all that built up fuel that gets into the factory catalytic converters overheats the exhaust and it was a major problem with these cars. Obviously as time goes on, that's the first thing you do to a rotary. You pull the catalytic converter system off. You free up like 65 pounds and everything's happier. Everything. It runs cooler, makes more boost. So yeah, I mean they just they have unburnt fuel that ends up in the exhaust and they just shoot fireballs. And sometimes they're larger than others and this car seems to really shoot some pretty majestic fireballs out of the flamethrower. It's one of my favorite cars I own. Something about just driving a rotary, is, it's a pretty special experience. So if you get a chance to drive a rotary after watching this video, I highly recommend it because I think for the car guys that don't know enough about rotaries, they're really special cars. Um, it's just the smells and the sounds that they make. I think all car guys can enjoy them for what they are. So hopefully guys, you watch this video and you say, hey, I'm gonna go drive a rotary.